Amy Cohen will never forget the moment when every parent's nightmare became her reality. I looked down at my phone and I had like 30 voicemail messages. You know, it was the police, it was the hospital, it was my husband. I, I raced there. Her 12-year-old son, Sammy, hit by a multi-ton SUV on his way to soccer practice. The child's body cannot withstand being crushed by a van. And he held on for five hours but did not make it. Sammy, one of nearly 4,800 pedestrians killed by cars in 2013, a number that's only risen, projected to pass 8,000 deaths in 2022. That's the highest in four decades, an 88% spike since 2010. So what's behind the surge? Some experts blame the rapidly increasing size of the vehicles on our roads. Four to five new vehicles sold or leased in the U.S. in the past couple years have been SUVs or uh, pickup trucks or vans rather than cars. And the difference between a pedestrian being struck by a sedan versus the high blunt hood of an SUV or pickup truck could be the difference between a broken leg and a fatal head or neck injury as deaths from SUVs rise faster than smaller cars. I find that just a 10 centimeter increase in the, the front end height of a vehicle leads to about a 22% increase in the likelihood that the pedestrian dies. And it's not just the size of vehicles. Experts point to other factors for the increase in deaths, like drivers distracted by smartphones and increasing rates of reckless and impaired driving. And the way many roads are designed in the U.S. makes the issue even worse. In 2021, most pedestrian fatalities happened on arterial roads, not highways or in downtowns, but multi-lane routes that radiate from city centers. Like this section of U.S. 19 in Florida, with high speed limits, six lanes of traffic, and crosswalks few and far between. It's a prime example of a street designed without pedestrians in mind. The outcome has been lethal. Between 2017 and 2022, nearly 50 pedestrians lost their lives here, one of the most dangerous stretches of road in the country. And there are dozens of deadly hotspots just like US-19 all across the US. Roadway safety is an issue that resonates in all parts of the country. Polly Trottenberg helped New York City bring down traffic deaths with its Vision Zero program, launched in 2014. Now, as Deputy Secretary of Transportation under Pete Buttigieg, she's working to expand it nationwide, attacking the problem from multiple angles. We're focusing on vehicle design, roadway design, speed reduction, driver behaviors, and how we can better take care of people once they've been in a crash. The most recent numbers have been encouraging, as early estimates show that pedestrian deaths fell 4% in the first half of 2023. But for Amy Cohen, the country still has a lot of catching up to do. We are nearly five times as dangerous as 28 other nations of our peers. And it doesn't have to be this way. It, it does not have to be a deadly act to, to walk, to bike, to drive, to get around. Sam Brock is joining us now. Okay, so Sam, we know that the government's trying to make roads safer. What about the cars? Right. So first of all, big picture, Hallie, the Department of Transportation has doled out close to two billion dollars to city governments all across the country for those macro kind of changes in city planning that we just heard about. But to your question about cars specifically, Secretary Trottenberg talked about a couple of things they want to incentivize car makers to do to help people outside of the cars, not necessarily the drivers or passengers, but people outside of the vehicle. So what I'm talking about right now automatic braking for vehicles where if there's a pedestrian like you see on your screen right there the car will just stop and a lot of higher end vehicles do that right now your car might make a beep 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 sound or some sort of urgent alert mm. when someone is nearby but this universally just stops them imagine how many lives that would save she also discussed technology that would allow you to detect and scan and stop someone from driving if they appear to be impaired like they've had too much to drink the device in the car would detect that and just stop the vehicle now, the reason that I'm standing where I am on this specific corner in Miami, this is Biscayne Boulevard over my shoulder, is because a 33-year-old mom, Hallie, was trying to cross this street about a month ago and was hit by a semi-truck, whole Ugh. bunch of traffic like there is today. The driver did not see her. Can you imagine if that technology allowed the truck to automatically stop? We'd be having a different conversation. Yeah, absolutely could save lives. Sam Brock, important reporting. We're glad to have you bringing it to us tonight here on the show. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.